Welcome to Electron Line. You've probably been wondering, well, he's been doing nothing but 2x2 matrices. What does it look like when you do a 3x3 matrix? What if you need to find the eigenvector of a 3x3 matrix? Well, here's a good example for that. We start with the matrix A, which is a 3x3 matrix. We have an eigenvalue, and we need to find the associated eigenvector. We use the same principle as before, that we take the matrix minus the eigenvalue multiplied times the identity matrix and the whole thing multiplied times the eigenvector should give us the null vector. So we use the same approach as before, just a little bit more work since it's a 3x3 three three matrix. So let's do that now. Let's subtract the eigenvalue from each of the diagonal elements. So that gives us the following. We end up with 11 minus 2, minus 11, minus 7. We have 7 minus 7 minus 2 and a minus 5, and 3 minus 3 and a minus 1 minus 2. And then we take the whole thing and multiply it times the eigenvector x1, x2, x3, and that should then give us the null vector 0, 0, 0. All right, simplifying this so we can take a look at it and see what we're dealing with. Here we have a 9, a minus 11, a minus 7. We have a 7 a minus 9 and a minus 5, a 3, a minus 3 and a minus 3, multiply times x1, x2, x3, the three generalized variables, and that equals 0, 0, 0. Now we have like a system of linear equations. Notice here we have 9 times x1 minus 11x2 minus 7x3 equals 0. We have 7x1 minus 9x2 minus 5x3 equals 0, and 3x1 minus 3x2 minus 3x3 equals 0, and we're supposed to solve for x1, x2, and x3. That solves solve this system of linear equations, and that will then be the eigenvector. The way to do that is to try and make these into zeros. In other words, we're going to write an augmented matrix. Let me do that now. So we'll write a 9, a minus three, 11, a minus 3, seven, and a minus 3, a the seven, augmented minus zeros seven. here. And if we turn these three elements into zeros, we'll be able to read the values for x1, x2, and x3. That's the reduced echelon form. So let's, uh, let's see here. The best way to do that is to move this to the top and this to the bottom, and then divide that new row by 3 to get a 1 in this corner. So let's do that. We're going to first interchange R1 and R3. And then we're going to take the new R1 and replace it by one-third R1. And if we do that, we get the following matrix. Let's see, can I squeeze it in there? Let me go up here. we got more room. So when I do that in the top, I end up with this row, but divided by 3. So this becomes a 1, a minus 1, a minus 1, and that's still 0. The second row doesn't change, nine, 7, minus 5, and 0, and the top row goes to the bottom, 9, and minus 7, minus and 0. Next, we're going to get rid of these two elements by using this one up here. So we take R2 and replace it by the negative that number, times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to R2. We take R3, the negative of this number, 9, multiply times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to R3. When we do that, we get the following matrix. The first row doesn't change. 1, negative 1, negative 1, and 0. How about the second row? Well, that's the technique here. We have minus 7 times this added to this gives me 0. Minus 7 to, times this is a plus 7 added to minus 9 is a minus 2. Minus 7 added to minus 1 is plus 7 added to minus 5 gives me hmm, a plus 2. For the third row, minus 9 times this, added to this gives me 0. Minus 9, that's a plus 9, added to minus 11 is a minus 2. Minus 9 times this is a plus 9, added to minus 7 is a plus 2. And of course, we have zeros there. Now notice that the two bottom rows are identical. Hmm, okay. So what I can do here is I can make it simpler and divide both of these rows by 2. So I'm going to take row 2 and make it 1 half row 2. I'm going to make row 3 and make it 1 half row 3. 
So the matrix looks a little bit simpler like this. So we end up at a 1, a negative 1, a negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, and 0, and 0, negative 1, 1, and 0. So writing that now in equation format using the top, I can say that x1 minus x2 minus x3 equals 0. And from the second equation, which is identical to the third equation, I can write minus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. And from the bottom equation, I can simply say that x2 equals x3. So I'm going to do is I'm going to let x2 and x3 equal 1. So I'm going to let x2 equal 1, and let x3 equal 1. And when I do that, I plug those two values back in the first equation to then find a corresponding value for x1. Here I can say that when I take this equation, I can say x1 minus x2, which is 1, minus x3, which is 1, adds up to 0, or x1 equals 2. In other words, when I let x1 and x3, equal, x2 and x3 equal 1, then x1 becomes equal to 2, which means my vector that I'm looking for is equal to, well, that would be the three variables, x1, x2, x3, which then can be written as 2, 1, and 1. And that is the appropriate eigenvector for this matrix with this eigenvalue. Sometimes we want to normalize the vector. In other words, we want the, the sum of the squares, the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of the vector to equal 1. Hmm. In other words, what I want is I want the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared to be equal to 1. So I don't know at this point what the values are for x1, x2, and x3 but I know the relationship between them. So if I let x3 be a constant c, and of course since x2 is the same as x3, I'll let that also be a constant c, and since x1 is twice that, I'll let that equal to 2c. And I'll plug those values in here and see what we get. The square root of 2c squared plus c squared plus c squared should equal to 1. And that will allow me to find the value for c that will give me the, what we call, eigenvector in normalized format. So this will give me the square root of 4c squared plus c squared plus c squared equals 1, or the square root of 6c squared equals 1, or in other words, c is equal to 1 over the square root of 6. In other words, if I want to normalize this vector, I can say this is equal to c is 1 over the square root of 6, c 1 over the square root of 6, and 2c is 1 over, or I should say 2 over the square root of 6. And this is now the same eigenvector in normalized format, in case they're asking you to do that. But most textbooks, in most cases, they simply want to leave it like this. Again, it gives you the relationship between x1, x2, and x3. Well, the other way around, x1, x2, and x3, or in normalized format. And that's how it's done.